will blow your mind. The audience will do so in kind. A little vanity mixed with some insanity on the morning show with GMP. Good morning, Portugal, and I'd like to welcome you to another fantastic day. Hola, bon dia, alegria. Munson here with the Good Morning Portugal show, a live stream and podcast. How are you this morning? Now, um, I think I'm going to go straight into trying something Portuguese because I really need it this morning. Let me just um, tweak a few things here. It was um, There is, seems to be wine spattered over some of the studio lighting. Looks like it was a good night here last night. And if you're a friend of um, Mrs. M., um, you'll see on her timeline the sing-song that occurred after the Good Morning Portugal Wine Club last night. Thank you very much. The Whitby's Johnny Cocktail. Great job, John. Johnny. He got us going. I uh, thought he completely took us off on the wrong track. And re- I forgot it was uh, April the 1st yesterday. I don't know why I would have forgotten that. Um, and we've got a couple of great uh, selections uh, that were doing the rounds yesterday here in Portugal. So the Austins as well. And uh, Chinese Terry here in the studio with me. Uh, last night as well. So great fun. And uh, I'm going to start with something to help me. I'm a little worse for wear. Where's that to try something Portuguese video? Have we still got that here somewhere? I thought we did. Oh, here we go. So something to uh, fortify and recharge my constitution. I'm hearing myself really loud. Is everything okay at your end? This morning, hearing myself very loud in the headphones, and that's not entirely comfortable, I have to say. So trying something Portuguese this morning to fortify and recharge myself after, um, well, the first thing I I can tell you about when it comes to trying Portuguese things is please try this. If you like Chardonnay and you would like to try, excuse me, a Portuguese Chardonnay, uh, this is um, Monte, well, it's Quinta dos Capuchos who um, make this. That's the winemaking Quinta here. And uh, of course, it is a Monte Capucho is the name of uh, one of their lines of wine. And that's their Chardonnay, um, recommended to me originally by the late, great Chris Emerson um, of Cortain Wines. Absolutely delicious. A Lisbon DOC and a really good job. And it sets straight my uh, grasp, understanding and appreciation of Chardonnay wine, which I was never that fond of, really. used to think it was quite syrupy. The words that came up, <clears throat> Johnny Cocktail and the Whitby's are very, uh, very much the wine connoisseurs um, compared to us Brits, it would appear. And uh, they were talking about uh, how Chardonnay can be buttery, oaked and buttery. That sounds really, too much of that doesn't sound especially pleasant, does it? Uh, and I'm going to zoom out for myself. I'm loud to myself and also a little bit, um, a little bit uh, big on <laughs> the screen for my liking as well. So by way of um, staying up really late, drinking lots of Chardonnay and singing, um, what was suspicious, suspicious Minds that uh, we were singing last night? Well, we had a number of things, uh, and I think that has been immortalized. If you're unfortunate enough to be a friend of Mrs. M on Facebook uh, this morning, you can inflict that on yourself later. Great fun, though. Absolutely brilliant fun. And by way of... Uh, Balancing the bodily constitution. I'm trying. The, I love copper. Are you? Do you know about copper? The um, it's like uh, Whole Foods. It's a bit more agricultural. Not quite as flashy as Whole Foods Market or Whole Wallet, Whole Purse Market, as I think some people call it in the United States. It's um a natural health store, mainly fruit and veg, but a few wonderful extra side items like this as well. They do honey. They do peanut butter. They do herbs, teas, and spices and and other wonderful things yeah wine of course that's where i got my um, monte cappuccio chardonnay from and i bought this yesterday not realizing how how um delicious <laughs> and revitalizing it would be this morning so we've got there masa we're going to be speaking more portuguese you know that don't you masa uh, ananas uh, gengibre and limão there and basil manjericão I think is the principal ingredient. I'm going to just uh, taste this on your behalf this morning, especially if you've just gone, Ugh, I would never drink that. Apple juice with uh, basil in there, um, some pineapple flavor, some lemon and some ginger. And I'll tell you, there's a, there's definitely some peppery ginger top note on that. It looks like pond water, doesn't it? Um, it doesn't taste like pond water, fortunately. Mm. Fragrant. And um, quite the sensation, quite the oral sensation. Oh, that's burst my um, 
<laughs> taste buds and saliva glands all going at one in, in um, accord there. Re it feels like it's doing me some good. Very revitalizing. Cup of tea standing by and a great big glass of water too. Thank you, Wine Ninjas, for a great evening. Right. Um, who's in this morning? We've got to Joao Denor, of course, as you can see on the screen. Bon dia, Portugal! And Lee McGrady, good morning, people, as well. And we're talking about uh, Paddle Ball. Oh, excellent. And by Randy. Bon dia, Malta. I sung Suspicious Minds at my wedding. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, that and Band of Gold, you probably don't want to be singing, um, much to my uh, Portuguese in-laws' dismay. And no doubt Chagrin, aren't they? Haven't they got some uh, French um, genes in there as well? By Randy, good morning to you. Thank you for being here. 7.40 this morning. Bom dia, gambas! A feliz terça a todos. Como vão as coisas? Have you missed me? Um, asked James this morning with a mindful moment. <sighs> change your thoughts and you change your world. That's a good old good one, isn't it? Change your th thoughts and you change your world. That's Norman Vincent Peel, one of the granddaddies, really, of the personal development human potential movement, I would say, along with Dale Carnegie and other names, Earl Nightingale. Norman Vincent Peel. What was, was he the how to win friends and influence people? But they were a little bit of um, a sort of personal growth mafia, though, weren't they? Uh, those three gentlemen and others like them. Mindful dad joke. For security reasons, your mantra needs to be at least six characters long. Very good. Um, is it? You need to be able to remember it, though, don't you? As you omit in your in your head um, whilst you're meditating, and uh, your visuals this morning, then James. Thank you very much for these this morning. First of which is not Antonio Costa. That was our opening meme. That's him saying thank you, and presumably goodbye there. He uh, looks like he stepped down officially. In, in case you didn't know, Antonio Costa there, and switching from politicians and prime ministers to here's a question for all the mind readers out there. Very good, James. There you go. Here's a question for all the mind readers out there. Okay, <laughs> let's move. Let's move on. And uh, my son. Oh, okay. Back to the enterprise. My son has been. You can see what's going to happen here, but just look on that woman's face. My son has been playing with electrical cords and accidentally shocked himself. What should I do? Ground him until he conducts himself properly. <laughs> Thank you, James. Uh, thank you on behalf of everybody who has uh, that has been inflicted upon this morning. Have a great day. And Coach Turner is in with a God Squad tip of the day for us. Bon dia a She said at 8.16 this morning, como estás? Training again this afternoon and coaching after. Just ticking over at the moment to stay healthy rather than competitive. So we're getting the insights and learning from the pros here. So he's just ticking over, not, not exerting himself until competition time by the sound of it, as the road trip won't be conducive to fitness. Ah, sat in the car for extended periods and enjoying beautiful food and drink around Europe. God's God tip of the day. Then we looked at netball and basketball yesterday, but there are, um, but are there any other team sports that might fulfill all three of our fitness requirements? What are they? Very good. Stamina, speed and strength, the pillars upon which the God Squad program is built. The only one I can think of is rugby, and I suspect that's beyond most of us now. Is there a walking version of uh, rugby, uh, Coach Turner? Because there there's walking netball, I discovered last week, and of course there's walking football, and that's very popular with a few of the retired expats over here on the Silver Coast. Is there walking rugby as well? Open to other suggestions, says Coach Turner. So what alternatives are there? There we go. A friend of mine enjoys walking football. So I wonder, if is there a, a, a rugby version of that? That's surprisingly tiring, as is netball, as I discovered, and requires bursts of fast walking but little strength. The same would apply to hockey. The Gaelic sport or the Gaelic sports would be good, but not common outside the Emerald Isle. Aussie rules football too, but a similar issue to rugby. Yeah, pretty um, <laughs> physical and healthy. Um or unhealthily physical sometimes. Um, but a, to a similar issue to rugby then. So in conclusion, team sports are great for speed and stamina. Training, but require extra strength work for overall fitness. Ah, I've got you there. I will consider other options tomorrow. Have a great day. Thank you, Coach Turner. Thank you very much indeed. Coach Turner, do teams of two count? I've discovered paddle and enjoy it quite a lot. We'll talk to you about that later. Joel Denor, of course, joining us at 9.30 with an update from the North, uh, especially as particularly um, the European tour. He's been to France, Spain and Italy in uh, recent weeks. 
So we'll talk about that. You've seen the pictures, of course. Oh, and I'll play uh, Joao de Nort's, um Easter fireworks in just a moment. Still feels like Easter to me. Really quiet still out on the road this morning um, when I took the dogs out. And um, it's just, it really has felt like Christmas. It hit me. And we were talking about this yesterday, weren't we, James and I? It is, it's as powerful, important as Christmas here in Portugal. And it feels like we're in that Christmas aftermath that um, I'm familiar with from the UK still. And a uh, beautiful, quiet day in the Bay yesterday. Nice to see the Ducks yesterday. Coach Turner then do teams of two count. I think paddles, great. Probably, there's definitely speed and stamina. Strength again. You've got to do some. You've got to lift some iron, haven't you? Some steel. Some get in. The, get in the gym and lift some shiny steel. Pull a few things. Not your help yourself. Hopefully, um, let's find out what Coach Turn has to say that a little bit later on. Gerald and Nort joining us at nine thirty. Then and a bit of Tony time. The man in Aminio joining us in about twenty minutes, and he's got a lovely property to show us. Bondia. Yep. Suspicious minds. And yes, I think I was right about that. Correct, Carl. Well remembered, my wife is French Portuguese olive skin with that sexy French accent. The best of both worlds. Um, walking to walking tag rugby. There you go. That's the uh, slower version, isn't it? A great event to go for a nap. <laughs> Brilliant spectator sport for anyone looking for a sesta or a siesta um, in the afternoon. Erica, good morning to you. Thank you for all your work over at uh, the Portugal Club. Um, it's amazing, isn't it, over there, some of the conversations we're having. Water polo. Oh, um, that used to terrify me. I, we had a really terrifying water polo teacher. One of those teachers who you really got the sense didn't want to be there. Remember teachers like that? They're just like, I roll on four o'clock or the summer holidays or the Christmas holidays. I do not want to be here with these kids. It, it, Mr. What was he called? Mr. Penny, I think. And I, I think also when you've got these teachers who were something outside of education and have ended up with a job they didn't really want, they're thinking about the old days or they're thinking about the weekends or after school or the school holidays. And he was quite a um, jaded character, I think it's, it's fair to say. God bless him. I um, mean, he'd be a very old man by now. And he was also in, in the acoustics of the swimming pool. I couldn't understand anything he was saying. Well, luckily, it was a whistle blowing and um, just trying to avoid a water polo ball or several water polo, pool, water polo balls being fired at my head at great velocity in the water whilst trying to keep up in the water and tread. I mean, throwing a ball and keeping up in the water um, when you have the, um, I don't know, some people float better than others. I, I'm not one of them, I would say. Um, hmm, that copper says man Jerry <laughs> on the label. Who doesn't like to man Jerry? First thing in, man Jerry count, you've missed out the dog part. It does say count as well there, man Jerry. Have you got a copper? I think it's a Silver Coast thing, isn't it? I do do love copper. Great brand. Um, do check it out if you are living uh, here on the Silver Coast or passing through. You've also got a big, because they're doing a promotion, they have um second jar of this, second um, bottle. is 50% off, so it's a good deal at the moment. And I, I also have, or the, if the kids haven't drunk it all by now, um, have a bottle of um, strawberry juice as well, uh, which is very nice. Let's play your fireworks whilst I have a sip of tea. And we'll have a look at some of these um, April Fools that were going around Portugal yesterday. Fireworks first, though. This may well conclude our celebrations for Easter here on the Good Morning Portugal Show. Thank you to Joao de Nort for this, and we'll see him a little bit later on too. Could you pass, pass me some man? John, it's man Jerry Carl, uh, which reminds me, I have to take Jimmy in for his weight loss. Um, it's the best way I can think of um, describing it. Uh, poor Jimmy is going in for a particular surgical procedure um, this uh, this morning after the show. Man Jerry Carl, Carl as in dog there, but man Jerry Carl, basil. It's not man Jerry juice. Now, you know you've had a good time at the wine club when you can see wine spattered on the lighting. That is not going to come out easily. We didn't throw any white wine or salt on it. But for some reason, there is a red bow tie here, which I didn't buy. Um, somebody pushed the boat out, though, didn't they? 150 at, at Forum China. <laughs> 
maybe that will surface at the piecing together the pieces forensically um there was talk that it would be a topless um wine club last night I, look at that I, I am preserving that man's dignity there but not for long let's have a look at his nipples there you go um he would look good with the i think maybe that's where it was going topless and red bow tie yeah poor old jimmy is having his castras castrasal um later on today um so yeah jimmy going in um for his weight loss uh, a little bit later on and um, yes please report your portuguese language adventures want to hear more about that sort of thing yesterday i had an entirely uh, quite complex conversation with a mechanic in portuguese which was great um so complex mechanics mechanic type of business with automobiles check and then to the vets now i was trying to speak portuguese in the vets and arranging for you you see if you're arranging for a castration that could go really badly wrong for for people for several parties involved in that sort of thing the owner um the dog the cat the cat got castrated yesterday i uh, picked him up it's amazing I, I back i remember castration not from my own personal experience of course but i remember castration being an overnight you know when dogs are uh, when pets are neutered um, they often used to stay in overnight, did they not? Now it's like bring it in off after 10, pick him up at five, boom, boom, let's go. And uh, here are some extra things we're going to sell you at the end of the process as well. Excuse me a moment. So I uh, did all of that in Portuguese. However, interestingly, and do you find yourself in this situation? Um, I was saying hello to some of the other uh, local people in the veterinarians yesterday. And I was talking to the receptionist uh, on reception, nice easy one, right? Um, yesterday, um, it, we're in Portuguese, and she just came straight back at me with English, and the kids were with me, and uh, I just kept going in Portuguese. Do you do that? Do you break, and do you do you falter? And as soon as you get the opportunity to uh, speak English, do you go ahead and do that, or do you carry on in a slightly odd situation where? You, the foreigner, are speaking Portuguese, and the Portuguese person is carrying on speaking English, brilliant as they are usually at doing so. Um, that's the situation I was in yesterday. So quite pleased, actually, with my Portuguese performance. How was your Portuguese performance yesterday? Or what do you intend to do today? What are your goals today? We'll see the Portugal Club members tonight, and we'll be talking more about learning Portuguese. And we'll have a special guest tonight who teaches Portuguese with us. So we're really stepping it up on the learning of the Portuguese inspired by the domingo portuguese project yes one nation one day a week where we speak english and eat portuguese who actually really wants to do that other april fools then yesterday that were doing the rounds in portugal look at this sagresh vacations a new tram line open today in the algarve officially prepared for the tourism season isn't that brilliant a 28 tram the number 28 looks like that doesn't it uh there down on an algarve beach very good and then we go to um, Pastéis de Balain, where we've got the Nova Receita Pastéis de Balain, a new recipe for pastéis, oh, pastel de natas, uh, the, or pastels, uh, pastels of the nata. And that is, um, oh, now you, Portuguese test for you. What are passion fruit? They've got a great name. Oh, it's a bit like Manjericão, isn't it? Um, that, I believe, was an April Fool from Pastéis de Belém since, is that, does that say 1837 on there? They are the, the dad, talking about the daddies of, or the granddaddies of uh, personal growth. They must be the, the same in the Pastel de Nata industry. So good effort there. A passion fruit or alien looking Pastel de Nata there um, with a few of the passion fruit seeds uh, in there too. And, um, oh yes, talking... This, when I was, uh, oh, we released my interview with Dina Rolo because she spoke to us last Tuesday at the Portugal Club. Very interesting talking to her. And does anyone address listening? Now, this was a really good um, response to my YouTube video yesterday, learning Portuguese with Dina Rolo at Language Coach and Edupreneur over here in Portugal, of course, just up the road from me in Nazaré. Does anyone address listening? I need to learn to understand Portuguese or spoken Portuguese. It's no use if I can speak. Uh, and if, but I can't understand the, or the response. It's no use if I can speak if I can't understand the response. That is definitely a thing, isn't it? That's the thing of, you know, you, you try a little bit of Portuguese and then what comes back um, is really fast. And um, this is what this gentleman here, R. Chaz, uh, 1023, was saying on YouTube in other responses to my postings as well about learning Portuguese. He's really struggling with his comprehension. Now, I, I would say my response to that would be to watch more TV, listen to more radio. 
and immerse yourself, and eventually that should improve. Or the good old fashioned devagar. Oh, I'll show you um, the rest of the resources. Actually, that's where uh, that was. Uh, in case you didn't know, that was yesterday was our little uh, uh, April Fool joke, the Domingo Portuguese. But I think we're going to stay with it. It's a brilliant start to learning more Portuguese, which is what we intend to do. We're really going to up the, uh, the the pressure. Well, I don't want to put pressure on people, but we're going to up the fun, actually, um, and energy around learning about uh, Portuguese, the language and the culture. Okay, that's going to be a focus uh, for the next little while. And if I go to our homepage and click on Domingo Portuguese, where that was pointing all day yesterday, I'm going to show you in case you didn't go there yourself yesterday, some of the wonderful resources that we've collected over the last uh, few months and years. So here we go, Domingo Portuguese. If you clicked on the link, that's where you'd have ended up. And there is an opportunity to join the Portugal club there. You can join it at basic level and mastermind level, the fun way uh, of learning about the Portuguese language and Portuguese culture there. And of course, a link to Philomena. She's going to be the star of the Expats Portugal webinar this Thursday. When's that? Still only Tuesday, isn't it? Oh, the weeks fly by, don't they? Um, we're going to be uh, with uh, Philomena on Thursday at 7.30. You can see Philomena there, and that's uh, her special on Portuguese accents there. Always a live Q&A every time Philomena joins us on the Good Morning Portugal Breakfast Show. There's a link through to Mia Esmarish's Kickstart Your Portuguese, the Basics free online course there. You can click on that and sign up there. And my interview, my most recent interview on the language with Dina Rolla. We've got another one tonight. We have a speaker tonight. Maria will be talking to you. She's got a free ebook here to give away as well. Food Out, A Bite into European Portuguese. You can download that free ebook. Um, the other idea I had the um, just recently, So Falamos Portuguese, we only eat Portuguese, starting a local club where you only speak Portuguese. British Dave. Hello there, this is Dave in Portugal, British Dave in Portugal, I should add, and I'd like to cordially invite you to my new podcast, episode one, Basic Lingo. Basic Lingo there from, uh, there's, that's um, Dave, not Dave, not that Dave in Portugal. British Dave in Portugal there, down there on the Algarve. Uh, and he's fallow a bitting of the old Portuguese there. Um, Learn Portuguese Basic Lingo, episode one. It's been a while, Dave. How about episode two soon? There's that ebook that you can download from Portugal Door. That's also collected there with the resources that are amassing on our Domingo Portuguese page. My interview with Joel and Rui of Practice Portuguese. They were the first people I spoke to actually about learning Portuguese. Let's have a quick listen to this. Yeah, for sure. So I'm Joel, and I'm from Canada. Rui, I'll let him introduce well, himself. Well, eu sou Rui, uh, moro em Lisboa, tenho 37 anos, 37. e nasci em Lisboa, cresci em Lisboa, trabalho e moro em Lisboa, e... Wow, 2018, you think I'd be better <laughs> by now, uh, Portuguese, my goodness, I knew absolutely nothing then though, and that was a lovely conversation I had with Joel and Rui of Practice Portuguese. There's the elephant in the room with me and James Holly. There, you can watch a little bit of a video about that. And do you remember when this was actually new, Facial Portuguese? Thank you very much, Marcus. Do you remember these? Um, his basic, well, linguistic um, contortions, you might call them. And there he is modeling his chuva face, his esta complicado face, his push, push, si, si face there. Also the muito saído and the claro and oh, nossa senhora faces. Absolutely brilliant. Look at those. Look at him. And the dos seu no quero sobre mesa. Oh, couldn't possibly face. Uh, a serio? And devagar, going back to what the gentleman was saying earlier on about not being able to understand and comprehend Portuguese. A hey, devagar, could you please slow down a little bit? Um, just because I said botard with a correct accent doesn't mean I really speak Portuguese face um, in brackets there. Lovely. That's brilliant. Lovely to revisit that, Marcus. And Warren Sharm. Remember this? I did it in Portuguese. Oh, 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 oh yeah. I did it in the Portuguese. 15 minutes per day to join the elite. Even tried it. Out on the street, nothing like doing it in Portuguese. But no one laughed 
or scolded me. A waitress even brought me out a cup of tea. The Uber driver offered to show me nothing like doing it in Portuguese. It's a shake, 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 rattle and roll. Oh, let the Portuguese down in my soul. Oh, shake, shake, shake. Well, thank you very much, Warren Sharm there. Very good. Loads of resources. And as Erica is urging you to do, go practice Portuguese there. Um, celebrating more victories, I think, out there on the um, Portuguese language battlefront. You have lost you've lost a lot of weight since that photo congratulations carl you should some po post some more before and after pics with or without the red bow tie i'm wondering that's what he's talking about there um and um you choose with or without the red bow tie there pete good morning to you maracuja yes manjerica and maracuja thank you very much or oh, maracuja um hmm doggy man jerry he's not le he's not letting it go is he We'll talk to you about that at 9.30 if you want to. Chris Smith celebrating a recent birthday. Bon dia, miss you guys. What's with the Lisbon tornado? Real or April Fool's joke? That was not an April Fool's joke. That was uh, a couple of days before, wasn't it? Um, and I showed it here on, on the show. Quite terrifying, a real tornado um, in Lisbon a few days ago. It's the worst of this weather behind us now. I hope so. It was amazing clouds in the sky uh, yesterday here on the Silver Coast. Really beautiful natural clouds um yesterday quite extraordinary bon dia gumbo's another quick check-in before more sightseeing in madrid cheers michael and have you shouted out bon dia espana from your um rooftop uh, this morning how did you enjoy the after wine club karaoke special gary it was amazing we had the best time uh, paying for it a little bit this morning but don't worry i've got green juice with me and can you see how the sediment Really looks like pond water now, doesn't it? It looks like there should be a little newt or toad floating in that. And if you leave it too long, I've got to stir it with Mrs. M's pencil here, I think. She won't thank me for that. I can't drink it like that, can I? So, uh... <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> um, that's helping. Love the karaoke special. And when we have a gumper get together, we must get a karaoke machine. It's so much fun. Um, that brother of yours has got a great voice. He can dance, he can sing, he's got it all. I've mostly, and he can drink wine. I've mostly focused on listening this first year or so in Portugal. Now we'll focus on classwork and lessons. Nice one, John. And I conducted an entire transaction, a transaction in Portuguese at the Farmacia on Saturday after apologizing for only speaking a little Portuguese but asking for English. Uh, the, mate, the man helping. Uh, helping me continued on in Portuguese and only used an occasional English word to help expedite the transaction. What is pile cream um, in Portuguese, I wonder? And then he complimented my Portuguese and Portuguese. It, felt, it does feel great, doesn't it, when um, people in Portuguese people say, I'm muito bem. When you get one of these, hold on a minute, um, you get one of these for that. Muito bem. There you go. Feels good to get that, doesn't it? Not asking for English, not asking. For... All right, we got the gist. We got the gist there. And there are all those resources. Just go to the homepage, Good Morning Portugal. Hit the home tab, the homepage tab. And there's a number of other tabs. There's all sorts going on, including all of those wonderful language resources. I learned an odd phrase at the weekend. Why? What were you doing at the weekend, Peter? Um, if you'll eat anything, you are called on bon garfo. That is, yes, I remember that phrase. Thank goodness it was fork rather than knife. Yes, otherwise you'd be a bon fucker, wouldn't you? Um, yes, I did just say that. And fucker is knife uh, here in Portugal. Not just being disgusting at this time in the morning at nine o'clock. Whereupon we'll have um, Tony joining us in just a moment. Have you heard of a men's shed is a message I've just got through on WhatsApp. I think so, but that could mean all sorts of things. But there you go. If you're a good fork, um, you're adventurous with your food down. Bon garfo, not to be confused with a good garvo over there in Al Viagra. But that's a good phrase to know, isn't it? On bon garfo. I think I need to make some more of those little memes, don't I, with these phrases. And, of course, loads of Portuguese sayings at the Portugal Club as well. Hundreds of them. Uh, thanks in mainly uh, to T-Duck, who started that off. 
and then Antonio F who picked it up and ran with it. Bon dia, Carl, and all you lovely gumpers from the OLP. How are you, OLP, this morning? Good to see you. Can we help at all? And by Randy. Pete, another thing is if you like your food, drink rather than kissing your fingertips, you pinch the back of your ear. I wonder why that, why would you do that? Um, the chef's kiss is quite um, a clear gesture, isn't it, of appreciation. Pinching the back of the ear. Can you pinch other people's ears? And, and should you um, in a public place? Let me just uh, make sure that uh, Tony has got the right link to join us this morning. We'll, actually, what we might do whilst we're waiting for him is um, play his uh, video of a lovely property, a great listing in Valencia Domino. Uh, we can, what's this? Oh, we're going to talk to him about uh, being in Vietnam recently as well, running into two different groups of Portuguese tourists, as he did, mostly retirees over there in the Far East. And um, he's going to be organizing a trip there in uh, February of 25, if you want to join Tony in the Far East. So what we'll do is we'll play his um, his property video nice new listing oh morning to you Philomena how are you this morning morning to bye glad to hear it excellent and bye Aja. another great phrase as well um I never knew that one either someone said that by Aja to us yesterday um, whilst we were out and about so keep it going everybody um many a mickle makes a muckle all these little bits that you pick up do add up and you do know a lot more than you realize or recognize okay so we'll be doing some work mrs m is even going to record me a hypnotherapy script and we're going to we're going to be sending so many resources your way portuguese um, or portugal language portuguese language boot camp as well is coming your way so um we're going to we're going to have a lot of resources to help you overcome some of the psychological stuff some of the fear help build your confidence but keep and keep building your vocabulary every day. Put the telly on in Portuguese. Put the radio on in Portuguese. Just surround yourself. Immerse yourself a little bit more and come and celebrate your daily progress, will you, every morning uh, here on the Good Morning Portugal Show. Antonio Barbosa is with us. So give us a thumbs up if you're ready to join us, uh, Tony Time Man in the Mino. Yeah, OK. I'm going to take that as a yes. Oh, he's on. Is he, is he joining us by phone? Or did I just press the wrong button? Here he is, the man in the media, everybody. Oh, Tony, how are you this morning? Hola, bon dia, tudo bem? Bon dia, Carl. Bon dia, everyone. Feliz terça-feira, first terça Tuesday of the month. Oh, it is. And that means there's a touch of Tony time. Uh, the man in the Mino is with us from the north of Portugal, the man from Infinite Solutions. Where are you, Tony? It looking a little bit like you might be in an elevator uh, this morning. No, it's... Yeah, you know what? Let me turn on the light. Give me one second, Carl. Sure, sure. Well, he's being interrogated. Um, Maybe you've got a one little phone. bit. Gonna... Yeah, I'm being interrogated. You know, I'm at, I'm at my AIMA appointment. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. You got an AIMA appointment? How did you do that? You have to let everybody know how that's done. I got an AIMA appointment. Yeah, I got one. I was in the last. Uh, this was overnight, you know, so I had to rush in here. So <laughs> the gold, it's the golden ticket. But yeah, but but I'm I'm in I'm in. Yeah, I'm in I'm in uh, uh, Vila Nova de Cerveira, so happy uh, happy to be back in the Mino. Spent the, so much. <laughs> seems like I'm packing and unpacking, Carl. I mean, I've already packed for my next trip out to, to Georgia, the country. So that's what it's about. Is that you know? right? Uh, yeah. Please tell us about both. Then. So tell us where you've been and how it was. You've been over to Vietnam, I just mentioned, and you're thinking of organizing another trip out to the Far East. Tell us about how that went. Is spectacular. I mean, what can I say about the country? And I think there's a lot of uh, misconception, probably the word. Um, people don't know what they don't know. People think they know what they know. They don't know nothing, <laughs> even myself included. Uh, yeah. When you hear about Vietnam, when you hear about, you know, the past, uh, the Cambodia, I went to Cambodia as well, Thailand, um, yeah. and that part of the world, you know, it's a um, beautiful part of the world. And that's yeah. why I'm definitely going back. Um, because it was just a uh, delight. <laughs> what can I say? You know, you talk about like, I was just swimming, for example, in, in, um, the warm water. I, I think it's volcanic there because yeah. it's too warm. It's not even, you, people say the Caribbean is warm or other parts of the world, you know, um, oh, bon, bon dia, Filomena, bon dia. And, um, but really that part of the world is just something out of this world. And that's why, you know, for, and you know, it made a click. Here's the thing, Carl. I would never expect to see, you know, when you go and I love when I go away and, and I see the Portuguese flag. So mm. here I am in this, you know, 
little, it was actually an oyster farm. They're showing you how to make, how they take oysters, make the pearls. And I saw this guide and he had a Portuguese flag and like you had, you're, you're crawling, you know, you're, you're, you know, your, your arms and you see, and there's a group of, there's two groups of Portuguese retirees there. Okay. One had 42 people, one had 45. And I wow. ran up to one of them and I said, Hey, you're not in our group. He says, yeah, so what? So we start hugging each other. You know how Portuguese are, right? Yeah, <laughs> it's amazing. He says, are you with the other group? No, no, I'm with another group. I'm with, I went with the Asian Real Estate Association of America. Okay, and they have a it's a global event every year. They have a different part of the world where they want they host it. Like last year was well, Mexico City was in 2022 uh, or 2023, 2024 was uh, uh, Ho Chi Minh City. That's the uh, old Saigon. It's called mm -hmm. Ho Chi Minh City. It's not Saigon anymore. <laughs> it gave people Vietnam. Um, but and then um, I'm actually trying. There's if they're going to be thinking about bringing that event to Portugal next year in 2025. So, uh, I went there also as a, a speaker talking about Portugal investments, uh, the golden visa, etc. So I was an invited speaker the same way. I'm going back to Georgia. I was there last year. I'm going to be going back uh, in about two weeks also as an invited speaker talking about international real estate and, and stuff. And then, then I'm going to Canada too, uh, my, uh, my dear Carlito for another two weeks in May. Uh, wow. so I, I get back and i unpack and pack and unpack and that's what it's about. flying the flag for portugal and portuguese real estate fantastic uh, yeah philomena's right you can find portuguese everywhere can't you my guest on friday said yeah when they when they open up the time capsule on the moon um when they get back there there'll be a portuguese flag in there as well he was he was talking about uh, moon base alpha uh, having a portuguese flag um in it as well i don't i don't recognize this one paul um bon dia mr carl sorted this language out got a time kettle you talk in english they talk in any language and translate it immediately this is a is this an april fall it's april the second now paul you may know the word but getting the pronunciation right is another thing but keep practicing gary austin i've been involved in some difficult and challenging situations trying to explain my clumsy in my clumsy portuguese like how I want repairs to rotavator blades sets. That's very specialist. You're not going to see that in a in a in a in a phrase book, I don't suppose. Organizing medicals and driving licenses. Keep up the good work and keep telling us what you're doing and how well you're doing and what sort of help you need as well. The OLP um, at Easter has three inches of snow. Who doesn't like three inches at Easter? Um, in northern Montana. And then today on April Fool's Day, it was 62. I guess, yeah, you're just concluding your April Fool's Day there, aren't you? Uh, at 62 and super sunny and, thank goodness, no tornadoes. We've had some right old weather here, haven't we? I guess it, that was quite a shock to come back to, wasn't it, Tony? You're there, you were in the Far East in this sweltering tropical heat. Come back here and get completely drenched, tornadoes and rain and damp and cold here in Portugal. Love it, love it. I missed it. No, I'm joking, but it's... <laughs> missed it. <laughs> Who doesn't love the rain? Who doesn't love the rain? You know, it's, it's, some, some, but not muito or Yeah, yes. well, it's uh, it's a lot in the last, um, I guess, in such a short period of time. You know, yes. um, that's what it's about. But, but yeah, and so when I saw that Portuguese flag, you know, for me, I just I ran to it, and you know, and you start talking to people, and that's when a light light bulb went off because I already made. That's when I go on these trips to other countries. It's talk about real estate. Mm. investments we're actually closing on a property well a referral we send the referrals i'm not going there to close on it because uh, but in georgia with the client from lebanon you know what i mean so that's what international yeah. real estate is and you're helping people all over the world it's just not in portugal carl carl yeah. i tell you that uh the world portugal is too small for me the world is too small and so yeah. <laughs> I, small. Hey, paul, and, and paul stick around paul paul we're going to have something that maybe just maybe is up your alley uh, to make you want to make leave the Algarve and move to the Mino. So yep. stick around, Paul Richards. Okay. <laughs> turn up your alley any minute, uh, Paul Richards. Um, and what do you, how do you anticipate the weather to be in Georgia then? I don't know much about Georgia. What's it like over there? Great. I was there last year. Uh, oh, no, sure, yeah. And so it, it was, it's like end of spring, end yeah. of spring, really. Um, like, um, well, middle, middle, early spring to late spring. It's uh, it's a, it's a great weather. Great, great time. I was in shorts all year round there. And so as well last year in Georgia and it's, it's warm. Uh, Portugal, you know, Georgia has some really extreme similarities to Portugal. Imagine Portugal 20, 30 years ago. I think you we had talked about this before uh -huh. uh, in terms of real estate, in terms of uh, people, the, the agriculture. Georgia, the word actually means agriculture. <laughs> okay, so yes, uh, 
course it does. Yes, George, the farmer. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so um, it is a country based upon agriculture. When we talk about a wine culture that we have great here in Portugal and many other parts of the world, uh, their, their wine culture is sec centuries and centuries old, you know, millennials from, uh, um, you know, the, w there's, a, there's a certain wine that it's made El Vino da Talha, that's made in the Anfors, in the clay pots, right? Oh, in the yes, clay, yeah, yeah. clay reservoir. Well, there they've been making it for thousands of years, and it's underground where they have these pots, you know? So mm -hmm. a lot of them that you see here in, in Alentejo, mostly that's where it's made. Vino da Talha is the name of it here. That's the ancestral way, uh, the the Roman, how you make wine, right? There was no, you put them in these big clay uh, recip uh, recipitories, and it's a, it's, it's a great wine, and they have a... Tons and tons. I'm actually going to be one of the days I'm going to be there. I'm going to be doing a live um, for this uh, uh, um, radio station in the U.S. <laughs> that the for them there in the wine country as well. So, I mean, I got some things planned out and, and going there, you know, and, and I, I love going to countries and revisiting again. Not only I'm invited as, as a speaker, of course, but but it's going back because just to see how it progresses. And that's what I'm going to be doing to Vietnam, too. And that light bulb went out when I saw the Portuguese as, man, you know, two different groups. Like, you know, I, I'm going to get together with a few friends, go back, show them real estate, show them. Because even there's a lot of things. A lot of times when people, uh, Carl, when you buy an airplane or you buy a, a vacation to Vietnam or any of these places, I can almost guarantee you the person selling you that vacation has never set foot there themselves. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. Yes. So no, I know where to go. Where, yeah. where to go. Where to eat. Uh, we organize our events here. You know that people coming yes. into Portugal and showing Portugal, but we also organize outside. But you got to go there. You got to deep dive into the culture, to the people, getting making those right connections with the hotels directly, and and the 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 places to go and eat and do. I mean, it's it's just so much fun, and that's um. So it, it'll be exciting to put it all together to go there as well. Uh, but yeah. Keeping but back busy, to Portugal in the rain, rain, right? Back back to Portugal in the rain now. So, yes, and let's have a look at this property that you sent to us then. Tell us a little bit about it before we roll the VT. Well, it, it's a, it was an old century-old home, been renovated, uh, great property in a nice location, quiet. You could do it, have it as an Airbnb. It used to be an Airbnb, actually. Okay. Um, and um, great location. What's great about this property is that two of the bedrooms, or the en suites are down on the main floor. So it's wheelchair friendly. You know, we're not getting older, right? People are looking for single family homes uh, down or, or ground floor homes so they don't go up and down stairs. This yeah. one in particular is great because it does have that advantage. It has an annex already for a one bedroom place. I spoke with the architect because it's a sizable piece of land. If somebody wanted to build another annex house or a guest house, it has 3,000 square meters, so it is possible to build on that land as well. And mm -hmm. so, um, and then the views, and it's quiet, It's uh, and the house is just nicely decorated. It's, it's a beautiful home. And, uh, so can't built wait. for the future, uh, I think that's what you're getting at there, right? If, you, if, yeah. if you're anticipating uh, aging here in Portugal, you could do a lot worse than this. And a nice little annex for your nurse to live in, possibly, there, or your tag <laughs> team of nurses uh, living on site as well. <laughs> So you never know, a, but but that's, know, I never you know, thought about that. I never thought about that, but you, that's a great point that you made. Okay, all right. Let's have a look at it now, um, and we'll be right back uh, um, after we've had a look at this video from uh, Antonio Barbosa from Infinite Solutions joining us this morning from the Minho. Hey, hey, and here in Valencia do Minho, looking at a property listing, be coming on the market soon. Country property. It's a renovated home rustic beautiful garden that has a lot of other trees and flowers lots of space outside large swimming pool right this is the facade and we're going to take a look inside as well it has about three thousand square meters just a little bit over three thousand and make it a family home or even a holiday home and so yeah we're gonna take a look inside here into the open space living room with fireplace
most of the furnishings will be stained. So it's going to be sold furnished. Nicely decorated as well. Fits in with the rustic and modern at the same time. Quite a few entrances to the home. And here we have the kitchen. Island. Some features that were here originally. And this is actually the entrance, the four-way entrance to the house. So it wraps around back into the open space, living room and dining room. And you have two bedroom en suites here at the bottom at the ground floor because it's a two level home. There's a, okay, wardrobe. So two bedroom en suites on the ground floor. It's also um, wheelchair friendly. And again, whether you make it a permanent home, holiday home, or additionally, if you wanted to continue to do as a bed and breakfast, it is possible. Again, stone, you can see the features, great condition as well. This is the other bathroom en suite. And hardwood flooring. This is whether a walk-in closet. Whoop, there you go, me. <laughs> and yeah, down here, this is, again, uh, two bedroom en suites, living room, dining room combo, with the fireplace, kitchen, and also there is a service bathroom. And I'll show you that in just a sec. Okay, another service bathroom. And then a staircase that leads upstairs to the upper level where there are two bedrooms and one full bath. Okay, and a wraparound balcony. Let's have a look. This is one of the bedrooms. You can pay attention to the detail of the work done in the wall, right? Again, most of the furnishings, if not all, will be staying in here. Great view. The countryside, right? Riverside. Well, the Mino River, it's there. <laughs> Not really a view to the river, but it is close enough even to the center of Valencia. And here you have a wraparound balcony that leads out of the bedrooms. And you have surrounded here in a quaint little village in Valencia do Mino. And lots of privacy and serenity that's what it's about living in the countryside and that's uh, pretty much it here that's what you're gonna find peace and quiet so yeah home beyond the market more details to come guys tony beautiful home very nice you're not included because we saw we saw pictures of you during oh, the filming not there. you're not included in the particulars there are you people can't afford you can they let's face it well, you know what? I sell my soul for a dinner or lunch, so. I <laughs> Bear that in mind. Bear that in mind. <laughs> Negotiable. Invite me, lunch or dinner. invite me to lunch or dinner anytime. Just don't invite me to work, right, Carl? <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. My model okay. for life. My model for life. <laughs> so two and a half million euros, if it was in the Algarve, um, Paul is saying. How much is that going to cost you up there in Valencia? 600K. Maybe not two and a half million euros in the Algarve, but probably 1.5, 1 1.8 1 yeah. for sure. It would, and it's incredible it would be property to sell in the Algarve, 1 1.5, 1 1.8 overnight. I mean, that's literally, yeah. you know, the difference is, Carl, here, the building is going, the construction costs pretty much are all the same. What yeah. changes is the land. And that's yes. the difference where you are even even in the Algarve. And, and you know, there, to, um, it's a big difference in the price of land throughout Portugal. Here, yeah. it's, I would say it's probably not the cheapest because if you're buying in, if this house was in the Queenborough area, it would be a house for around 
450,000, maybe less than 500K. Every yeah. single area region. Here, we're close to two major, three major airports, actually. Porto, an hour. Uh, Vigo is only less than 30 minutes away. And you have said Santiago de Compostela is an hour away. So we have, you have, you know, the, the culture of Spain, which I love to say is one of the beautiful things about living up here in the Nino. Mm -hmm. um, and even friends that we've helped here move uh, a while back. Uh, it's one of the things that they say. They love it here because they're so close to everything. And, you know, they're not, and they lived in the Algarve. They lived near Coimbra and they moved up here recently. So this is someone that's been moved around uh, of Portugal, been here more than 20 years as well and moved around. And they said, this is where we belong. And the Mino has it, you know, and I think it's one of those undiscovered areas of Portugal that I'm, I'm lucky. I'm fortunate to live here because yeah. you have it all. You have it all. Even the pri prices of properties. Okay. It's a home like this, maybe not as big of a land, okay? mm -hmm. not as big of a land, uh, maybe three bedrooms or four bedrooms with the pool, et cetera, three baths, uh, not in maybe in just a little bit, 10 minutes away, more interior, you get, get a house that between 350 K uh, to less than 375. So you have those kind of prices here, uh, beautiful homes like that. And this is just one, one of those gems that, you know what, like um, it's, it is, it's, I, I think, you know, when you say 600,000 is a lot of money. Yeah. It's a lot of money, but you know what? It's a lot of house too. And you, it's as you say, beautifully you, made you as well. Plan ahead, you want to plan ahead in the future, maybe build a, another annex or build a guest house, etc. have an income producing, maybe have the nurses and you don't have to go to a nursing home. How much do people pay for, for nursing, right? You can have the whole team there and you yep. have it all, you know, but yep. let, let the home come to you. If you already have the home. So it's a beautiful property. Will. It is. And that lovely granite characteristically Northern Portugal, the, the, the way the stonework is integral in the design, that incredible mural. Is that St. Mark's square? Is that, was that an Italian? Yeah, 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 exactly. And it was all, and that's all painted. It, it looks like a 3d image. It's, yes. it's amazing. I mean, it's, yes. you look at it and it's like, is this painted? And it's, and mm. yeah, it is like, it looks like it was, I don't know, like, aluminum foil or something you know kind of goldish and stuff incredible just... effects yes and 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 there's something about um, how surprising these these gems are up in the north it shouldn't be surprising but it, it is because people have folk been well their focus has been drawn elsewhere uh, when it comes to property in portugal so it's always lovely to see uh, you sharing these sorts of properties and i wonder uh, when these were built, um, they are a reflection of what the agricultural and manufacturing culture environment up there. That this is where the money, the, the big money up in the north, is from farming and, and industry, isn't it? And these are where these homes come from. Absolutely, you know these, and you have this is that's a small farm, but it's big enough home. That's a yes. actually had gave a lot of land because it was a lot of land that the property had. When yeah. you talk about these manor houses, especially Ponte de Lima, more concentrated, Viana do Castelo, yes. Vila Nova de everywhere. They're, they're either, they produce, they fed a village. Okay? Yeah. That's yeah. where people live. They worked the land. They had they had nothing to eat. They, their main preoccupation, or they were worried about, you know, a hundred years ago was, where, what do we eat? Yeah. You know, and so they were working the fields. They had the bread, they had the wine, they had... Uh, they had the cheese, they had all the things, the agriculture, right? The, yeah. the potatoes, the, the vegetables. They never, they weren't hungry, that's for sure. You know what I mean? They worked their tail off because uh, yeah. uh, it's not easy working the fields and the agriculture, I'm sure. But you know what? And then they had annexes, different, you know, the caretakers of the property. They lived on the grounds and stuff. Um, and that's what it was about. So when you see these rich manor houses or these homes bigger like this, this one was, a, uh, uh, and it was amplified, of course, you could see, but it maintained its original structure uh, as well, or charm, rather, you yes. know, and it and it, it couldn't see, but there's high ceilings. That's one of the things that you see um, with the newer homes, the new rustic homes, let's just say mm -hmm. these homes that have been renovated. And, you know, you could do, there was a questionnaire, how much is it to build? Oh, there it is, uh, Ar 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 Oregon, hey, Oregon, <laughs> nice to... See, I love Oregon and that uh, north uh, uh, west part of the world in the States. Um, building these homes is a little more expensive than building a traditional home because you have to find the right craftsmen and the people to do it. You're mm -hmm. talking about building a normal home here in Portugal, on average, 1,200 euros a square meter. Okay, 1,000 to 1,000. So if you have 200 square meters, which is 2,000 square feet, look at 200,000 euros. That's to build a home not even buying the land, et cetera. That's a normal home, okay, at a 1,000 euros a square meter. That's yeah. what uh, any builder you get uh, uh, an estimate to do without any of the, the 
the white goods, of course, building the home, 1,000 yeah. to 1,200. Building and renovating a home like this would go around 1,500 to 1,600 square uh, uh, euros a square meter, only yeah. because of the level of expertise, the people doing the craftsmen. Those are very hard to find. Um, you know, it's a dying breed, unfortunately. You know what I mean? But, you know, some of them are, are a younger generation are picking that up. Hey, they can't get jobs or they're working for themselves. That creates yeah. an, also an, an economy, uh, Carl, here in the north and other parts where people have a certain gift or skill that they learn or it's passed on. And so yes. they're taking on from my father, the business, doing the curbs, the sidewalks, the, the walls, the perimeter walls, the house is rebuilding. And so they, they develop their own business. Hey, I'm not working in a factory. I'm going to work for myself. And they develop that. And that those are um, that's something that I see that. And that I'm happy to see it because it's it won't go away. You know, you'll still find those craftsmen and they're younger and younger as they come along. And you see they're they're oh, in their early forms. And they're 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 exceptionally well. Uh, uh, they do fabulous refurbishment, and, mm. and, and it, but it is more expensive without a doubt. Well, it's lovely to hear that that there are uh, craftspeople who are not leaving the country who are getting back into that sort of work. And interesting point here from Philomena: uh, the north of Portugal is where the money is. Now you don't realize that immediately, do you, as as a tourist or as a newcomer to Portugal? But it makes a lot of sense when you travel up there. And I got um I got an Uber. We've got Ubers now in Caldas de Reña, and I had to get one to, to come home. A flat battery in Caldas. Got an Uber. Had the most amazing conversation with the driver, who was not only it was his second job, um, as is often the way, and his principal job was a furniture business that he runs with his brother in Caldas de Reña. Guess where they came from originally forty years ago, up in the north, and that's where things are made, isn't it, in the north of Portugal? And as I think Philomena is saying, that's where the money is as a result, and you end up with these wonderful houses that are very. I mean, they're not modest because they're huge, and you know they are among the more expensive uh, houses on the market. But they're not ostentatious, are they? It's not people aren't flaunting wealth in your face up in the north of Portugal. Uh, what's that about? Is that just the quietness and the um, I don't know, the, an old-fashioned work ethic? It's, but, but does that, does that um, make sense to you? What I'm saying? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. There's no ostenticity. People here yeah. are humble. I mean, humble yes. in the sense yes. that yes. they're humble. They have what they have. You'll see. Yeah the owner of a manor house driving a smart vehicle, not this big Mercedes and or Ferrari. He'll have a smart vehicle. Yes, so yes, yes. He'll have a, you know, electric vehicle. And he's, you know, he's dressed in like me. You know, sometimes people like, you know, I, 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 I don't, I never judge a book by its cover. It's something I learned a long time ago. People do judge me a lot because you know, I, I like to wear comfy clothes. <laughs> you know, I like to wear my, I like to wear shorts. I like to wear my sandals. You know, and so yeah. people, and you know, and I'm not overdressed or showing. You know, like Austin. I'm not. You don't have to. It's just part of it is the culture of the person, of course, and the the way of being, a philosophy of life. Okay, but yeah. but here in the north, people, you know, they keep to themselves. They have it. You know, they're, they're not going to show it around. They don't need to. People know. They know who they are. They know the houses and. Even they have, and everything is all like you have these big trees and lots of privacy, you know, and that's, yeah. that's people like to keep to themselves. And, and that's what it is. I think what happens when you go to certain parts, other, that's a, things that come from outside and people want to maybe show off a little bit. And, you know, I don't know, you know, that's, a, you know, I'll, I'll show off on, on a nice dinner table with a nice bottle of wine or something that maybe yeah. I might go, I might, I might spread a little more. I might go, you know, but, but it is what it is, Carl. Maybe, yeah, maybe that's where the uh, ostentatiousness this is in. Ostentatiousness It's the size of the belly and the investment. Yeah, that's the, the investment know, that's gone into the, <laughs> into the, the investment that went in now maintaining that investment. You have to <laughs> maintain, maintain that investment. It's paying out with interest. Hands as well to know. You will see people with modest houses drive the latest Mercedes. Oh, I see the other way around. That, yes, that makes sense as well. Let's bring him on to join the conversation. Morning to you, John. That, that, uh, that's the first thing that I would be wary of. That they have a big, big, big Mercedes, um, yes. and, but it is—it's the other way around. Hi, John. How are you, my friend? Hi, John. How are you? Hey. Yeah. No, I'm amazed how uh, it, it, Tony's absolutely right. It's very un unpretentious, um, but people do like their cars, and yes. I like that. I like cars, so. Yes, yeah, um, and of course you live in Ponte Lima, and you're 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 um, appreciating, I think, what we've been saying about your. Yeah, there it is. Uh, you're appreciating what we're saying about your part of the world, which 
I think if I remember rightly, John, because we've known each other a little while now, but you you did you toured up and down Portugal, didn't you? You did a good old scouting trip, and you you liked the charm and then perhaps the the, the modesty and understatedness of the north of Portugal. Yeah, uh, quite a lot. Um, you're right. We did uh, explore a good bit of the south and the middle, and 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 then we suspected that we would like the north. Um, and so that was uh, our our in, uh, inclination, mostly uh, from not being there. Uh, I knew I would like the weather more likely, you know, with more green, more mountains, more um, more rivers, and things like that, which it does have. Um, but on top of that, uh, as Tony said, I mean, the people are quite unpretentious. Um, it is it's where Portugal started. Um, mm. You know, so there's a lot of history here. Um, and as with uh, Portugal as a culture, I mean, so much of it is just understated. Um, there's quite a lot to be proud of, but nobody's tooting their horns either. So, yep. um, you know, I quite like that because um, that's kind of more of the personality that um, I would like to portray yep. myself. So, <laughs> yep, in your smart car. Um, yep. So they. <laughs> I, I <do> have a... <laughs> So Antonio, before you go, before you go, because I'm sure you're gonna, be, you've got to get ready for lunch. Um, Antonio, yeah, yeah, yeah. what? I'm gonna get ready for the gym. I'm going to the gym. <laughs> All right, well, not standing your way. Uh, what would the cost of this house have been in 2019? So 600,000 at the moment. Has, has, has there been an escalation in these last few years? Absolutely, absolutely. You know, from ever since 2012, ever yeah. since you know Portugal suffered uh, not the financial crisis, it was a debt crisis in 2012. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, then came COVID in 2020. Uh, it actually, on average, since 2012 till then, until 2020, uh, you had an average increase about 8, 10% a year. Okay. After COVID, it actually spiked. Where yeah. Everybody said that the, the, it would collapse and everything. You know what? It went up to around, on average, 12, 14%. Some right. areas, 25%. So right now, and so if I, you look at it, in 2019, that house easily it could have been on the market and it probably would have taken a little bit longer or not, you know, but the demand is also for Portugal now. So that's what it's all about. But the house yep. probably then at that time would have been around 400, 450,000, 425. And that makes sense. And that's yep. because if you do it like every single year, an average of 10,000 euros per year, as of 2019, you're going to get easily up to, 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 to the 600 K. Yep. But you know what I always say? Make an offer. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> and he's not just talking about lunch. He's talking about a the house there. So, uh, bums and board up. Yep, make an offer. Great to see you, Tony. <laughs> see you again next month. And all the best. Great to have you back in the country. Ciao, ciao. Enjoy the gym. There Bye, we go. guys. Yeah. All right. Okay. There you go. Now, Joao de Nortes. Good morning to you. Good to see you back in Portugal as well, because you've also been traveling, haven't you? European tour for you. Yeah, uh, exactly. Back. Yeah, how's it going? How, how was it? Much more of the show as we were traveling around. But um, as you know, um, the rest of, uh, well, most of the rest of Europe is is uh, an hour ahead. So it made it a little bit difficult to uh, stay in bed till 930 um and uh yes. watch the show, so. yeah well thank thank you for being here you've you've come back to this sort of uh weather um this is this is your it's season, free I time in portugal <laughs> thunder lightning and hailstones as big as bees do you know for 300 days of sunshine per year i don't mind this bring it on there is some contention about this 300 days of sunshine. doesn't feel like that at the moment, does it? But have you been having a lot of that up there? Um, the hail. Um, yeah. well, yeah, we, we were just at the Pingadosh uh, yesterday and there was hail. Um, so we had to wait in the uh, lobby a bit before we made a dash for the car. Mm. But um, yeah, it came down in buckets, not the hail, but just lashings of, um, of rain while we were in the store. I was checking out um, and, and laughing with the, um, with the cash register and the other lady in line because we couldn't hear each other speak. Really? Uh, because it was so loud. Yeah. But it was, uh, you know, only lasted five minutes and then it passed on. Yes. Yeah. Um, 
And um, how was the weather for your trip then? So you've been in Spain, France and Italy. Could you just outline the trip for us that you went on? And of course, what a lovely base to have, you know, from the north of Portugal around to these beautiful parts of Europe. Um, that's a prototype, a template for others to follow as well. So where have you been? Yeah, we um, we had wonderful weather the entire time. We started out from, from here, took a bus to Vienna, took a train up to Vigo, took a high-speed train from Vigo to Madrid, um, and that was all the day. And then we spent three nights in Madrid. Um, and I have a little uh, notes to myself um, yeah. regarding impressions from each place. But, um, oh, yeah, wonderful. Uh, you know, Madrid, I would say, was the most walkable city center of any, uh -huh. all the cities we visited. Yeah. Uh, beautiful classic architecture, um, a lot of attention to green spaces and parks. Um, of course, there's palaces and there's the Prado Museum and, and all kinds of things. Lots of parrots in the trees. If you um, uh, And also snow-capped peaks visible from the um, rooftops. Uh, so if you look to the north, uh, there was a there's a mountain range. I don't know the name of it, uh, but it's only an hour away, and I think um, you know it's just beautiful. So oh, incredible. Um, impressed. Um, yes. And of course, in March the the weather's lovely and cool. And, you know, I'm told it's very very hot in the summertime, and I don't like very very hot. So. Um, well, my, Michael Barton's over there at the moment. You, you, you'd have seen this building. I wasn't sure whether it's a town hall or a church, um, but uh, you may have seen that while you're in Madrid. Michael Barton's over there at the moment. Your fellow, Bom dia, Portugal! Um, yeah, man. That's, yeah, that's like the palace area. I might, I don't, I'm not quite it sure. Well be, but thank you for that, Michael. Have a great time over there, and I'm sure he'll come back with similar tales as you um, of an appreciation for Madrid there. But you think this time of year is ideal? Yeah, I would say the uh, uh, springtime is ideal there. Um, it really yes. is. Okay. Um, less crowds and, uh, as I said, extremely walkable. Um, I like to uh, hop on, well, yes, the hop on, hop off buses. Uh, so you get on that, uh, sort of give you a, an overall sense of the, of the, of the city, and yeah. then you can um, uh, perambulate however you want from there um, so you know our walking was probably we we probably walked the the entire um what would equivalent to the entire bus route but um, yeah. yeah wonderful wonderful places um S spain as a whole as, as probably a, a lot many of you would would concur I and mean, it's a lot more exuberant um, <laughs> boisterous yeah. than than portugal yeah. um you know and and people aren't afraid to jostle you on the sidewalk and that sort of thing. Um, but uh, so definitely a little bit of a different personality than Portugal. Yes. And I mean, that's very obvious though, isn't it? It's almost like when you cross the border, suddenly the volume gets turned up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, well, your ears get gleaned out. <laughs> <you cross. laughs> well, we took the, um, then we took the, uh, the train, uh, the high speed train again from, Madrid to um, to uh, Barcelona. So the previous train got to speeds of I think two two twenty five or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, but the the train from Madrid to Barcelona got over two fifty. So wow, what's that like when you're on that? It was extremely smooth, um, very uh, very pleasant. So a nice way to look at the countryside and um, as it goes by. Yeah. Uh, so and then we went to Barcelona. Barcelona also for three days. Um, funny enough, um, I was write, writing down my impressions of the different cities we were in, and I didn't say anything about Barcelona. <laughs> it um, kind of, yeah. I mean, it kind of speaks for itself, doesn't it? It's a definite go-to destination. I mean, did you find it a little bit gaudy? I think you said. <laughs> yeah, quite a little bit gaudy. Um, the the uh, Sagrada Familia is is amazing um, yes. and beautiful and I, I think i sent you um video of that and photos um yeah. and it's worth what uh, very worth visiting that um it definitely is a tourist thing yeah. um and so buy tickets ahead of time and that sort of thing and you can avoid all the the higgledy-piggledy um 
Let me right. show you that video because one of the most stunning videos you sent over was inside and, and the stained glass. If yeah. I can just because you, you I mean, it's amazing outside. Everyone knows the outside, don't they? But it's I think it's the outside. Yeah, this stu staggered you. Didn't they? Yeah, yeah. So let's yeah. roll that beat in. Stunning, John. Isn't it incredible? I mean, you know, I'm just watching a video there, which you very kindly captured for us, and I could feel my heart swelling. What is it like when you're actually there? Well, the video doesn't do it justice, honestly, um, because <laughs> it, you just have this, it's just this wonderful glow inside. Um, and and to be frank, uh, it, it really depends, I guess, on time of day. Yeah. Uh, so we happen to get, we happen to go inside right as the um, sun was coming in from the um, what would that be uh, anyway it was it was in the late afternoon and right. so the sun was just coming directly through um, that one side of the of the building which would have I guess been southwestern side southwestern it would comes to mind yeah yeah um, and uh, the the interior there as you probably get a sense um, it feels organic uh, it feels like you're inside some kind of i don't know some alien something um and it's not about you know all the statues and all of this you know whatever it, it's all about the play of light yeah um, and it's just amazing there um so uh, what he did on the interior with the with the stained glass is just um, amazing and it's not finished, is it? I mean, I think we had a conversation over it's the chat close. about this. It's closer than it's ever been. Right, which okay. It was true yes, last year, too. Um, <laughs> yes. Yeah. But uh, there was a picture I sent um, that I think captured some of that where it wasn't even it wasn't even a picture of the glass. It was just a picture of the reflection um from the glass glowing in every shade of the rainbow um and it's just this huge arched um you know vault that you just see this amazing glow um and i think so i've it, got that yeah, yeah i think i've got that i'll, I'll show you that now because i mean you're right i mean that, that it's the play of light isn't it I mean, and that's great architecture isn't it? it you know you're creating a building but then how nature interacts with the building i guess is the is, is what this is all about here isn't it i mean that's the one you're talking about i think isn't yeah it? and none of that's glass not all of that's reflected and look is at all it? the facets um in the ceiling to reflect yeah. the different colors and things it's it's yeah. it's just amazing and uh, it, it, it struck me i remember playing the video at the time and and, and saying there doesn't seem to be much time for quiet contemplation in here the, the place is buzzing with people and tourists isn't it yeah. does it ever go quiet where you can we can sit and enjoy that or is it, is it in the nature of the building that it is a well, spanish experience it would um yeah and for certain events and things but yeah, yeah. uh but for what we were you know expecting and, and that sort of thing it's no fair enough enjoyable. yeah yes yes so that's that's barcelona the city itself is not, you know, um, not on my top ten. I would say, okay, um, yeah, the the architecture and the um, it, walkability is not so nice. Um, yeah, but it, it's a it's a strange city if you think about it in terms of European history because a hundred years ago it basically didn't exist. It was just a small little building, uh, fishing village. It wasn't even called Barcelona, I don't think. Um, and it was Gaudi that put it on the map, if you will. The city was built around the Sagrada Familia um, and the workers and all that sort of thing. And it also was the city that was um, became the center of the Spanish Industrial Revolution. Um, right. So a lot of, of um, more modern industry and factory workers and that sort of thing came there. And it started growing, and you know, I think it's the second largest city in Spain. Mm. Um, 
but it doesn't have any classic architecture. There's nothing from, oh gosh, this is 600 years ago. You know, every city you go to around Europe, you know, you have all these centuries old or thousand, 2000 year old classic history. There's nothing there. It's it, everything that's there only came about in the last hundred years or so. So that's it's a little, a little bit US like in that sense. You know, everything's modern, everything's new, everything's yeah. relatively, you know, there's a there's an old city there's an old little bit of a city um, what do you call it the small little streets, yeah. Um, but it's a very small little area back from when it would have been a fishing village or something and had a had a city wall, um, but most of the rest of it's a grid pattern. Um, it has it actually has street lights you know where no roundabout you know it's like where are the roundabouts, um, so yeah it's it's a little bit different that way. Yes. Yeah. Uh, don't get me wrong, Aviva. Um, the, you know, I, I can understand why in a Spanish cathedral it would be noisy, especially when people are just in awe of what's going on in there. I just thought you know, it, it would be another level as well. If you if you imagine being the, you know, one of the team there, uh, you know, the, a, 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 um, a padre who gets to be there, at th you know, six in the morning before people are there. It must be extraordinary. Uh, but yeah, I didn't mean to be critical of that. Of course, in in such a place, it's gonna, there's going to be a buzz of people. People are so excited to to be in there, and you found it amazing, the Sagrada Familia there. And so you've got an industrial, the heart of the industri of Spain's industrial revolution, and then of course this Gaudí Cathedral, um, which is an adjunct to that growth um, in in more recent times. I imagined it to be a historical city, so that's very interesting to discover, John. Yeah, it was it was a bit surprising. Yeah. Um, off, off we went then to Nice, France, uh, on, the, on the Riviera, um, and wonderful food, beautiful walk, um, um, boardwalk along the along the beach there. Yes. Um, but probably more suited as as a, as a jumping off point for either going to Cannes or going to Monaco, um, mm. which we did. We were only there for two nights. Beautiful hotel, by the way, right on the right on the beach. Um, forget the name of it. Um, Anyway, um, for uh, a Formula One enthusiast, which I am, it, I, it was more of a pleasure for me to go to Monaco than for Pam or the couple we were traveling with. So I did, I did force them to, uh, uh, how come we're not going to the car park or something? It's like, no, no, no we have to drive this <laughs> first. <laughs> so, so I took them on the, uh, the Formula One circuit, which you can drive the whole thing. Um, yeah. And of course, at normal speeds, um, but <laughs> yes. you, know, you can always pretend. Yeah. yeah. So that so the next time, so we watched the Formula One uh, race. I think it's in May, in Monaco. Um, now I will be able to place myself um, and picture myself there much more accurately. So on this so that, particular map, uh, it yeah. sounds like in in the same way that when you go to some of these um, Portuguese cities or towns that, that that gear themselves up for a bull run, and they you know the infrastructure is extraordinary. They cover all the shop fronts, don't they, and set up all these you know railings down the streets and many streets. The infrastructure for the Grand Prix in Monte Carlo must be quite extraordinary as well. Well, especially along the um, the waterfront there, where you see all the yachts. Um, yeah. So they have the grandstands all already built. Um, I think. For a certain amount of that, they must leave it up all year round. They just sort of tear down some yeah. maybe bits and pieces. But, um, but you know, the yachts are as you would expect. They're very large, wealthy yachts. Um, we were in one restaurant. And we were trying to picture, okay, which ones of these people are the yacht folk? You know, can we pick one? Can we pick them out? So there was one gentleman with his um, Pierre Cardin pants with his. <laughs> pockets that the, the inlining of the pockets matched the shirts you know yes um, that's a giveaway yeah and the, and of course the shoes and yeah that sort of thing so these people uh, exist don't they these people exist <laughs> it's quite extraordinary but you weren't tempted yourself to buy a yacht and sail back well it is it is a great parking lot for uh for picking out so that is that is a favorite little uh um pastime it's like okay which 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 yacht would be yours if you know yes if you so, so I was playing that game. Well, it sounds like you had the full-on South of France experience there, but maybe you got your your own, your own deck cho deck shoes and chinos on, and your sailor's cap and wandered about <laughs> and enjoyed that vibe down there. Yeah, uh, where did you go that. after that? 
after that, we, we rented the car there in Nice um, and then drove to Como. Um, and it's a very be beautiful drive. Um, and if you think about the shape of the Alps, which forms a cap over Italy, it, it drops down and actually comes very, very close to the um, Mediterranean. So when you're going from Nice, um, when you're going from Nice to um, Como along the coast, you, you skirt this one section where the Alps come almost down to the coastline and you can see the snow-capped peaks. Um, and so you, you skirt around the bottom of that and then you kind of come up to Genoa. Um, and then that fertile um, agricultural valley between Milan to Como um, and went into Como. So mm -hmm. we, we really did enjoy uh, Como quite a lot. Um, what a beautiful lake, um, just the stones throw from Switzerland actually. And so we added Switzerland to our list of countries visited on this trip because um, one of the little tours that we did they took us into switzerland to um another lake um which just slips my mind at the moment um toured around that and came back to to como um did you know that como is where um a lot of the fascists from world war ii they had their their villas and stuff and so when um uh, when things went south in um, in Italy at the end of World War II, Mussolini um, escaped to where he thought he would um, you know, be left alone. He went to Como, and it was in Como that he was captured and executed. So that, that right? famous picture of him and his wife being hung upside down, that's in Como. Is it really? Um, and is that what we're looking at here? Is that, is that Lake Como as well? There? Yeah, that is. That's, that, is, yeah. that is Lake Como, um, and that is the... That's the western side, so it's the sunny side of the lake. So it, this is the more this is the George Clooney side of the lake, um, and, then you, and then you have the shaded side, which is the the uh, eastern side, and so that's that's the poor district. Um, you know, right. Where, yeah. I, you I think we've got thirty seconds of video of this as well. The, 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 these images that you've captured John, are absolutely stunning. So a little bit of video of Como as well. It's stunning, years. isn't it? The talented Mr. Ripley, I'm expecting to see it any minute. Did George invite you in or not for, for afternoon tea? No, I did, send a, I did send a picture, I think, of George's place. But did you know that last that last place you just saw, it's actually in um, and has quite good prominence in a, um, a, Star, a Star Wars film. Oh, really? I think it's, uh, yeah, it's... Uh, um, what's, this, what's the planet that... Uh, Padawan the, that they go to the um, I'm not sure. where where, I'm not sure. where the the uh, the young um, Anakin Skywalker falls in love with um, with the the princess from whatever the name of the planet is. It's anyway, perfect it's, for that. Isn't it? I mean, the, the, you know, it's unreal yeah. looking at it. The images that you captured there, it's it's otherworldly, isn't it? Is it is it to do with the grandeur? The what? what why is it that those places? are just so stunning. It's not just well, the architecture, is it? It is. It's stunning. Well, the architecture, I mean, it dates back to the Roman times. I mean, the Roman right. senators and stuff, they had places on Lake Como as well. So this place right. is old. Conditioned um, with, with splendor. Yeah. yeah. So they, they know what they have and they, they enjoy it. Um, uh, the, other, the other movie I was going to say is James Bond um, Casino, the first one with... Um, oh, Casino Royale. Yeah, Christina Royale, not the yes. not not the old one, but the one with um, yeah, uh, Craig Daniel Craig. Yes. So the, the, there's a scene, um, prominent scene, uh, where he's sitting out on the on a lounge chair on that at, at that location. 
Incredible, um, incredible. Yeah, so it's it's quite an amazing place. Um, the disappointing thing was the the air quality. Um, I was expecting, you know, pristine alpine, alpine you know, yeah. fresh air and blue skies, but it was it was surprisingly um, hazy and smoggy, um, and it all has to do with this. Um, I found out about the inversion layer um, that is uh, north uh, in northern Italy. It has the worst air quality of all of Europe. Um, is that right? Yeah. So from basically from Tuscany on up to the Alps, um, there's this pocket that it develops um, where it's the industrial north. Um, mm. You have uh, you have Genoa and Milan and Venice and and the you know the buildings around there. Um, and you have uh, it's the it's an agricultural um, um, fertile area as well, but um, yeah, that stretching from Como on the north, um, Milan and uh, Verona, um, Venice, all of that is sort of this red brown air quality, and the rest of Europe is sort of green and blue. So <laughs> I found that uh, a little depressing, but uh, yes, of course, this, yeah. Yeah. And in the pictures, it does look a little bit better than in real life, because in the pictures, you can see the snow capped peaks off in the distance and it, and yeah. it makes it a little bit look a little bit better. But um, but uh, gosh, on a clear day after some rain, after clearing out the haze and things, it, it, it really would be amazing. Yeah. Uh, just if we could pop back to France for a moment. Um, Liz F is joining us this morning. Good morning to you, Liz. Um, did you stay at the Negresco? Uh, in Nice, uh, Liz is asking. Are you familiar no, with that? Uh, it was called something spa. On it was right on the beach. Um, uh, I, I, I could look it up, but um, not that particular one, there, Liz. Okay, um, yeah. Mrs. M's here. Hello, you beautiful people. How's your head? She's asking me how's my head this morning. Those oh, grapes okay. were good. Those grapes were very good. They made us sing so beautifully. I thought, uh, even at least in our own heads. Um, my neighbor used to work in Monaco, says Pinky, good morning to you. As a tour guide, she moved to France after college. She majored in French and lived there for 20 years and a few years in Martinique as well. That sounds lovely. What a, that sounds like a great life um, to be living. And Antonio, thanks. Hit the, hit the like button, folks. And yes, really hard and fast is what OLP has done, seeing your beautiful pictures and recollections of your recent European tour, John. So we're in Italy now, aren't we? I think, are we headed to Venice now? Yeah, next was Venice, so we uh, were back on the train. So we, we dropped off the car as soon as we had dry, uh, arrived in Como because you cannot drive in Como. Uh, so right. It would be very difficult. Yeah. Um, so, you know, walked to the train station, uh, hopped on the train to Milan, uh, then hopped on the train to Venice. So that was all very pleasant. Um, arrived in Venice, uh, and we booked um, our our favorite hotel of the entire trip, which was the Hotel Popodopoli. I don't have a picture oh. that I sent. Um, and it was uh, it was only a 15 minute walk from the train station, but you you know you have to cross over some canals and navigate mm -hmm. around and all these little bridges and things. Yeah. But um, it was a beautiful location uh, close to um, one of the main water water bus um stops if you will um and then walking distance well everything's walking distance in island but um uh venice honestly exceeded all expectations i mean we've yeah. all seen pictures we've all seen people saying look at me on my gondola and things like <laughs> yes. that um yeah. but it really is amazingly stunning it's just like this everywhere you look it's just a picture postcard and well, pam looks so happy there didn't she what yeah. a lovely photo and, and what, you I mean, this is just the perfect place i mean we just sort of found this little cafe um and and had a little um you know early afternoon coffee and pastry and then we we said we're coming back here for dinner so we came back there for dinner and they're like oh lovely. yeah so it was it was uh it was beautiful um and getting around Venice, you know, it's a little intimidating when you, it's the first time there. It's like, oh my gosh, how do you navigate all of this? But it's it's quite easy to get around. By the way, Como is easy to get around too. You can take a, a, a nice ferry tour around the, um, from Como, do a do an hour long circuit and it's only like seven euros a person. So, 
Um, wow, that sounds good value. Yeah, Como you think of as being really expensive. It's not actually. As a tourist, you can be there for relatively inexpensive and get around and do things. So, mm. but uh, yeah, Venice. Uh, you know, there's water buses, um, there's water taxis, there's gondolas, um, all kinds of things. And the trick is, well, first of all, the water bus is not that expensive, and it, you know, you get a little pass for 48 hours or whatever, and you can go anywhere and do everything. But the water taxis and gondolas, as you would expect, are, are more expensive. Everybody knows what the gondola is, but the water taxi, those are those beautiful, classic, um, you know, lacquered wood, beautiful boats that you see. Um, mm. And uh, the trick with them is their set price for the boat. So if you're, I, I forget, I don't know, it depends on how long you're going to go. Or where you're going. So a taxi depends on where you're going, or and, and gondola depends on if you're doing a 20 minute, 30 minute, 40 minute um, tour. But um, the gondola can sit up to six people in there, um, and it would be like 60 or nine to 90 euro. So if you have a party of six people um, and you get in there, of course you split it all. So it's, it's one set price. Then the same thing for the taxis, it's one set price. So if you get on with, you know, 10 people, well, then it's a lot less expensive than if it's just the two of you, but mm. two of us, but we did, <laughs> we did get a free taxi once where somebody was, you know, there's people that sort of, Hey, come, you know, there's people with little uh, coupons and flyers and stuff, which normally you ignore. Well, this one is like, no, no, no. Um, come to the Island of Morano. Uh, where you can see the blown glass and things, and it's a free taxi ride. And it's like, oh, okay. And so it really was. I mean, because I was a little bit miffed at the uh, the previous day or, or two days. I had, we had taken a taxi uh, back to our hotel, but it wasn't the wooden one. It was just it had a sort of a white hull, and it's like, uh. um, <laughs> but, but I really wanted to ride in one of those classic, you know beautiful, you know, don't touch this, you know, <laughs> kind of, uh, so, uh, we did, we, it was a free, a free ride. And this was actually a fairly long ride to Murano because we had, we were, we were on the, the Plaza San Marco, um, side of, you know, the big St. Mark's area. And, uh, that's where we picked it up. So you, we had to, um, we had to, pass through straight through the center of the island with all these little small um, passageways. So that was amazing. So the ride to the island of Murano was the ride was the amazing thing. Mm. I mean, the, the blown glass at the island, that is amazing, but I really enjoyed the taxi ride. And so I'm standing up in the back, you know, taking photos and I'm, I have my, my elbows, you know, on the, on the top of the thing <laughs> and the driver's like, no, no. I thought he meant no, don't stand, don't take pictures. And so I was like, I was like, sorry. And he yes. said, no, no, no. It's like, no, don't scratch the surf. Don't scratch my, my, my yes. polish. My lacquer. <laughs> my lacquer. Yes. So I'm like, oh, okay. Um, so anyway, I, I can appreciate, uh, you know, that, that, uh, that husbandry of, of true beauty and quality. That so, um, but the Murano glass blowing, um, that's, that was amazing. Um, Venice, of course, is, is famous for its uh, blown glass, for its lace, for its masks, all this thing. But Venice is where blown glass and glass art was uh, somewhat invented in Europe. Um, it was the, the colored glass where uh, they actually learned to mix various um, minerals in, in with the yeah. silica to make yeah. different colors, um, blue and green and yellow and orange and all this. And then they they perfected the technique of of because um, you can blow okay you can do a clear one and a blue one and you mush them together, but they would they would actually do it together. So it would be it would be um, colored um, in the single piece um, in very in different parts of so the the technique and the art for that, and it's all passed down from father to son. Um, Wonderful. For generations, um, there's only so many families that that do this uh, genuine Murano glass. Um, 
And so that was really quite cool. Um, I think Paul's enjoyed uh, Murano as well. Venice too busy and the cost of beer. Uh, the auctionman in, in um, Venice having paid a little bit too much for his beer for his liking there. That's that's still hurting by the sound of it, Paul. Thanks, Pete, for your commentary as well. Um, so where do we go from Venice then, Josh? Sounds like you had a beautiful time there. The photos are lovely. Yeah, then, then we took train um, from Venice to Rome. Uh, so it was oh, wow. a four hour four yeah. hour train journey uh wonderful easy um yeah. really love the train travel uh it's just um you know you can get you can get places maybe slightly slower than flying an airplane but between like a four hour a four hour train journey from venice to um to rome actually takes less time than it would to, to, it was a one hour flight but by the time you get to the airport you have to check in go through security wait at the gate go get your bag, blah, 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 blah. It actually takes less time just to get on the train, go do your business, get there and get a taxi. Um, and so we were in Rome then for three days. So three days in Venice and then the last three days in Rome. <coughs> and Bless you. I, I've been to Rome once before when I was seven years old. I do remember quite a lot of it because um, I did a lot of walking with my mom and dad. Uh, visited the Colosseum and, and I remember lots of steps and lots of fountains and and um, I mean, must have gone to the Vatican because I remember some well the form anyway um, point is that I had been there when I was a young child but I remember being sick there but so this time uh, three days in Rome and I was just blown away um, mm. with just the overwhelming sense of perspective history there because everywhere you walk um there is just um you know it's just stunning um and the from where we were we were walking distance to the river to the vatican to the pantheon to the trevi fountain had to take a taxi well um yeah take a taxi to the to the coliseum area bit, bit of a walk but um, I would, the Pantheon was just beyond words, um, for somebody to, especially appreciating the history of that place and when it was built and how it was built. It's the, you know, it's the largest, it's still to this day is the largest standing, um, unsupported, um, concrete dome in the world. Um, and, you know, it was built with progressively lighter materials going up to the oculus in the in the center did i send you the video of the yeah, rain? We, we will conclude with that video and i want yeah. i want to thank you for, for for i mean it'd be a really nice way to to finish today's show and your incredible travels mrs emma really appreciating uh, your stories from around um europe uh, she was fortunate enough to live in france and a little while in italy loving your stories as you are the nought and making the point as, as you as you have, uh, are demonstrating to us this morning and have done before how wonderful it is to be nestled in europe and to be able to move about in the way that we do so thank you john love it when you go on your travels and you think of us and send us pictures and videos and then come and talk about it um is there another trip planned are you thinking of what's what's the next one going to be uh probably actually norway on the Hurtgen, oh, wow. um ferry uh, <laughs> that goes all the way along the coast um in in and out of all the little fjords um, all the way up to as far north as you can go. Um, oh, so that's that's going to be our next our next thing. So not a not a fancy cruise, but just the the Hurtigard and um, Hurtigard. Just to be able to say that's great as well, isn't it? And before we we look at the Rome, uh, the, it'll probably be in the fall. The Pantheon video. Um, Antonio F is sending pictures from his uh, Christmas. Um, sorry, Christmas, Easter. I do pick up. I'm saying Christmas because of the snow there. Uh, but this is from his Easter break this weekend. Snow up in the north of Portugal. Snow on the road there. Isn't that amazing? And one of your pictures, John, uh, you yeah, came yeah. home to snow on the mountains in the distance as well. So quite amazing. Uh, lovely tales of travel uh, from you. Uh, last word to you then before we go out with the Pantheon video. And thank you so much. Thanks again for, for your lovely slideshow and videos. Really appreciate it. Um, yeah, good place okay. to be, right? Portugal is a good place to be to jump off into the rest of Europe. It is a wonderful place for jumping off, and um, you know, in, in Rome, I was I was about to say, you know, we we it, for for three days, you know, you got to do just focus on 
you know, the classics like, uh, you know, the Colosseum and the Forum and, and that sort of thing. But we also were able to go to the Sistine Chapel and to um, to um, St. Paul's Basilica on um, on Good Friday. Um, and so we were privileged to, to be there um, before they closed it all down for the Easter celebrations and things. Um, but just an amazing place to walk around. And what I was going to say about the Pantheon, what, what, what's so stunning there when you're in the Pantheon is, uh, you know, it, it is, uh, pristine the way that it was, I mean, it's, it's, it's the best preserved, uh, classic Roman architecture, um, in all of Rome. And so, you know, there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of architectures, a lot of, you know, buildings and stuff, but the Pantheon truly is the way they all were. And just the the amazing marble play of colors and, and just the, I mean, they, gen they genuinely had a civilization and an architecture that equals our own. Um, yeah. Yeah. And it was just stunning. Um, so th to think that you could walk about the city and everything was like this. Um, yes. It's amazing. We didn't even get into um, food and drink. Um, mm -hmm. OLP asking, did, did you and Pam enjoy good red wine on your trip? I dare say you did, right? If you're in France and Italy, you'd have had some good food. There's a few, little bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, good, good for you, John. Um, but uh, yeah, we, we enjoyed. Well, one thing that we discovered was the, um, the orange spritz with the black orange. Um, oh, every, right. Every, everywhere we went, there was the black orange spritz that you could have, so. Hmm, that sounds like worth noting for, for travels yeah. in, in, in Italy there. So thank you. I, I, I'd like to, to echo this sentiment here. Joao, thanks for, and this is your name now. You're just Joao, aren't you now? <laughs> here in Portugal. Joao, thanks for sharing your wonderful experience. Cheers, John. Uh, thank you so much. Love to you and Pam. And let's finish with this wonderful illustration of the beautiful architecture and Roman civilization that, that you talked about. The, the rain from the oculus that's the unique thing there because it, it i mean it's it's stunningly unique to be able to to experience the pantheon in the rain okay all right let's do that and thanks again and uh, we'll see you next month thanks john uh bye for now here we go